Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. For this video, I wanted to go over this little list that I found on the Crazy Coupon Lady site. It's titled, 49 Brilliant Ways to Pay Off Debt Without Getting a Second Job. And I thought it was kind of interesting. I've gone through the list already once. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on, uh, not all 49 things, because that's a lot, but some of them I have, no, I have no idea what they're about, and other ones I know quite a bit about the, um, the topic that they're um, bringing up. So I thought we'd talk about it, and I'll link to this article in the description below of this video if you want to check it out. Also, any uh, sites I mention, I'll put links down there below if you want to use those. Um, so, number one, get up to $500 a year in grocery rebates using apps like Ibotta. Ibotta is something I've talked about on my YouTube channel and uh, on my website, struggleville.net. And I really like it. There's a lot of other options also that you can use in addition to Ibotta, something like Checkout 51. But it's super simple. They'll give you offers on their app. And uh, it'll say like $2 off X brand of cereal. And then if you go buy it and scan your receipt or take a picture of your receipt, they'll give you $2 back. So I'm not sure how they come up with this get up to $500. As far as I know, there's no limit to how much you can earn on Ibotta, but 500 seems pretty excessive. You'd have to be really gung-ho to get that much. But Ibotta is a great way to, uh, to make some extra money back. Use bill cutters to negotiate lower monthly bills. So apparently this is a service that will negotiate your bills with uh, companies to get them lower, and then you split the savings with bill cutters. And I really hate this. It just sounds really sleazy and scammy. It reminds me of, like, debt consolidation companies. And I wouldn't go anywhere near this. I'm surprised it's number two. And I, if you hover over it, you see at the bottom of the screen where it says HTTPS bill cutters. It's not an affiliate link. I almost feel like they had to get paid for this to be, like, an ad. I don't know why it'd be number two, and I don't... Something about it I don't trust. And I don't think you'd get that much savings anyways because unless you have like huge amounts of debts and a company is willing to settle for like half just to get some money out of you, I just like I don't see a utility company in most cases or your cell phone company saying, oh yeah, let's let us just knock $50 a month off your bill and then by the way, we're going to give half of it to those bill cutters and I don't know. I don't trust it. I don't like it. I'm surprised it's number two. Save $100 a month by dropping cable and going app-based. I'm kind of surprised they call it app-based on the while They don't say, like, streaming or something. Um, but this is something that a lot of people are doing, and it is a great way to save money. Um, I have Amazon Prime, so I could watch uh, videos on Amazon. The big thing is, if you watch sports... All of these things are very difficult. As far as I know, Netflix doesn't have like a sports package where you can stream live sports. Same with Hulu. Amazon just started doing like Thursday night football games where you could watch it through Amazon. So if you're a sports fan, this is pretty difficult. But another option, and I'm sure other companies have something similar, but I have Dish Network. Um, they have something they call their Flex Package. And it's a really small, basic package that's only something like $25 a month. And I haven't looked at it in a while, so don't quote me exactly on prices. But it's like $25 a month. And then there's these little micro package. It's almost like an a la carte thing. Uh, there's these micro packages that you can add to it that I think are about $7. So for me, I have the basic flex package. And then I also pay for the news package because I like politics and I'm a nerd. And I also pay for the um, the local stations. So <clears throat> that's an option. Also, and this might be something farther down on the list actually, but if, if you really don't need much TV at all, you can just get an antenna. Especially if you live in a big town, you'll get quite a bit of options uh, on the antenna. So there's that. So save even more when you split Prime, Hulu, and Netflix subscriptions. So basically they're saying 
you share your subscriptions for the different services with other people. And I know tons of people do that. Like, that's the thing is um, to, you know, divert, <laughs> diversify, to uh, spread it out amongst a lot of people. And as long as it's not against their terms of service, I'd say go ahead and do it. But I would be careful to make sure that it's not because uh, you don't want to get banned from them or get your account closed or something because if they're going to know you're, it's coming from multiple people. Um, they're, I, mean, I guarantee you they track every IP address that ever was on it, um, and they're going to know, and they're going to know where it's coming from. So, I don't know, as long as it's not against their terms of service, it's a good way, I guess, to get free uh, shows if you know someone else who has one of the services. Number five, make $200 a year when you install a digital reflection device to your router. I would never do this. Um, it sounds awful. Basically what it's doing is... It's going to collect data on everything you do and every bit of internet traffic that goes through your house internet, through your router, and it's going to give it to a company to um, to sell to other companies, to sell to marketing people that can use that data to you know target ads and just to gather information about people anyways. Um, not something I would be interested in or ever recommend anyone else do. Earn $50 per month reviewing bands and fashion items with Slice the Pie. Paid to write reviews. Uh, sometimes you call sites like that content farms. Basically, you're providing content for a website that is you know, bringing other traffic and is searchable on Google, and they're going to pay you for it. There's all sorts of sites out there, whether it's reviewing items or answering people's questions. If you're into that kind of stuff, you can make money. Um, for instance, just to give you an idea, there was this website called Web Answers. It's defunct now. It doesn't exist. But um, people would go on there and answer questions or ask questions, and then members of the site would answer the questions, and there was ads on every page. So if you answered a question, then you would get a portion of their ad revenue for that page. If multiple people answered the same question, you would split the ad amongst everybody who answered the question. If the person who asked the question then selected one answer as the best answer, you become the only person earning ad revenue from that page. So a lot of these sites work differently, but they have the same concept of their goal is to get people to provide them content so customers or guests, whatever, people come to their site and they get ad revenue from it. So it says $50 per month. That's probably on the high end um, if you become popular on the site. And in, in which case, if you become popular on the site and it has its own like username and everything, I would immediately create my own site and try and get all the people that follow me and read my reviews to go to my own site to get a bigger chunk of that pie. But... Uh, let's see, number seven. Get paid to cook dinner with other people through Eat With. Some people may love this idea, but I hate cooking and I'm not a fan of other people, especially strangers that I don't know. But if you like cooking and you like hosting little dinner parties, maybe that's that's something that's good for you. I don't know much about that. <clears throat> Get paid to watch movie previews with Fusion Cash. Okay, this is one of them that, have you ever had somebody who, you know, they talk a lot and you have no reason to not believe what they say, but then all of a sudden they stumble onto something that you know a lot about and you see how wrong they are about that topic and then it makes you second guess everything else they've said. You're like, oh, he's full of shit about this, so maybe when he said this, you know, one of those things. So Fusion Cash is a get paid to website. And I use several of these sites, and I think it's a good way to make a little extra money. You're not making a ton off of them, but you can make something. And I never heard of Fusion Cash before reading this, so I researched it a little bit. It's awful. It's got to be one of the worst options as far as get paid to websites you can find. So I don't understand. I mean, I have an inkling, but for the most part, I don't understand why would they recommend this site because 
anyone knowledgeable in, on these types of sites would immediately see this site's garbage. So Fusion Cash doesn't have many earning options. So here they're mentioning movie previews specifically, but most of the sites offer that. That's not special. So Fusion Cash doesn't have very many offers, or they call them offer walls. It's basically just different companies that have offers for you to complete, like signing up for websites, watching videos, submitting your uh, zip code sometimes is a really easy one. In addition, Fusion Cash pays out once a month. Uh, it, was, it was something about on the 20th of every month, things lock, and then I don't know. But they're paying out once a month, and the minimum payout is $25. And all those things are kind of an anomaly for these types of sites. So, for instance, there's a website called InstaGC, and I actually pulled these up for you. So here's InstaGC and my earnings there. I've made $3,080 in 2017. Um, so far, we haven't got, quite gotten to the end of the year, but thirteen eighty one, dollars I've made. So their, inst, their InstaGC is instant gift card. So they pay out instantly. You can redeem for as low as $1. And they have like 15 different offer walls. So InstaGC is one of the best ones out there and uh, really reliable and legitimate. Why they wouldn't just put them on there instead, I have no idea. So we look at another one, Swagbucks. So if you've watched my videos, you've heard me talk about this one before. And here you see a lifetime earnings of $3,810.29. Uh, $3, Every SB is one penny, so that's how you, you know, just take out that. And So again, very similar to InstaGC. I think the lowest payout on Swagbucks is $5. You can redeem at any time throughout the month, and it usually takes about two days to get whatever you uh, ask for from them. <clears throat> and the third one I really like is Prize Rebel, and here you can see my lifetime earnings of $1,083. So, they're all sites that you can definitely make money. It's not any kind of scam or anything. And they're all better options than Fusion Cash, which is what Crazy Coupon Lady is promoting. And real quick, the reason I think they're doing this is a great way, you earn money on referrals from these sites. Like 10% is, 10 is typical. So here's the thing. If Swagbucks is the most popular site in this space, it's really hard to get more Swagbucks users as referrals, especially people that are going to be active on the site. But if you can get Swagbucks users to sign up for other sites, then you're like less known sites or sites that they've never heard of, that's much easier because it's someone who already has an interest in that type of site, they already know how to use the site, and they're already actively using one site. So you know that's a good referral that you're actually going to earn from. So you're much better off promoting unknown sites, hoping that you can draw away from some of the really popular ones and get people to the less known ones because no one signed up for it yet. The problem is you have to actually promote good sites. You can't promote junk sites because, one, people aren't going to use it, and, two, you lose your credibility when you're suggesting garbage. So <clears throat> I really don't know why Fusion Cash is on here. I, I, I don't know. So get paid to let Fronto, Fronto? I don't know, put an ad on your smartphone. So you install the app, and... Um, it runs kind of in the background of your phone. Every time you turn your phone on and the little lock screen would come up, instead, Fronto comes up with some type of ad. You don't have to click on it. If you swipe one way, the ad goes away. If you swipe the other way, uh, the ad expands. Like, it, it shows you more information on the ad. So, so I decided to give this thing a try because I thought that was kind of interesting. Again, it's not something you should expect a lot of money from. I mean, really, it's just an ad on the lock screen of your phone. So um, you're not going to earn a ton of it or a ton of money from it. I've been using it for like a day now. It's fine. It's not annoying. The ad pops up pretty much right away, and it's just as easy to swipe that thing away as anything else. Um, it does have a couple of features. Uh, well, first off, I have a referral code. It's earning bonus all lowercase letters but if you use it you get 1250 points i get 1250 points if you don't like the idea of referral codes that's absolutely fine uh it doesn't hurt my feelings but you're you're also hurting yourself with my 1250 points so um once you install the app and make your account to add a referral code you click the gear that's in the upper right hand corner and then when you're going through the account settings there's one line that says referral code even if you've already have this app 
you know, like if you've previously had it before listening to this and you haven't used someone else's referral code, I think after the fact you can still add a code and get that 1,250 points. Anyway. So, um, totally lost my train of thought there. Okay, so two other things, or three maybe. The first one is they have a daily bonus. All you have to do is open the app and you get a daily bonus. It's always a different amount, but easy way. Another thing is they have an hourly bonus <clears throat> that is tied to when you swipe, when you open up the lock screen. So if, if you want to be diligent about it, once an hour, unlock your phone and you'll get points from that. They're also partnered with an offer wall called Trial Pay, so you can do offers um, like signing up for websites and doing surveys and things like that right through Fronto, Fronto whatever, and uh, get paid for that. All right, so next on the list we have number 10, earn 18 to $25 per hour making deliveries for Amazon. Um, I'm kind of curious the claim to 18 to 25 hours making deliveries for Amazon because I'm pretty sure that's higher than the national average for um, earnings of people. So you would think if that was true and just anyone could do it that uh, more people would be doing this. Anyway. So Amazon has their, like, same day or one hour, two hour, whatever the hell their crazy delivery policy is. And um, it's like Uber for delivering packages, I guess. Uh, I'd imagine it's only available for larger cities at the moment. And before getting into it, I would want to know, can you refuse a package or how does that work? Because there's some parts of town maybe you don't want to go to, especially, you know, I don't know. Some parts of town you just might not want to be delivering packages to. Also, remember you're going to have some wear and tear on your car, and I don't believe they would um, pay you for the gas mileage. And I would want to find out if this counts as maybe being a private contractor and being able to write off the mileage on your car on your taxes, in which case you need to keep a log of all the mileage that you go. Um, also, I'd want to find out what liabilities do I have over these packages. If something is delivered, 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 damaged, or if something's stolen off someone's porch, am I in any way liable for what was in that package? So a couple things you may want to think about before diving into that. <clears throat> Get paid to help people, help name a company with naming force or squad help. This is another one where there's a lot of websites where you can get paid for things like this. Um, I don't know. I'm, I didn't realize people needed such help naming a company. I guess that is like a need. But it says anywhere from 50 to $500. I, I don't know about that. Save 30% on grocery bills when you buy generic brands. I guess. I know generic brands can be cheaper. I don't know if it would be average out to a 30% savings, but there's no revelation in that. Make money testing websites with test or try my UI. Testing websites through try my UI is a great way to make money while you're at home. Um, I'm assuming you're just testing out one the functionality of a website to make sure all the links work and everything displays correctly, and also with the layout. Um, I'm, I would assume you take some kind of a survey or give some kind of feedback on what you liked and what you didn't like. It says $200 per month. Again, I would say all of their um, prices that they mention here are probably the max out price, like the most you could possibly make. Like, if you think of YouTube and PewDiePie has 50 million something subscribers, he's the $200 a month, whereas everybody else would be like a dollar a month <laughs> or $5 a month or something. So just keep things in perspective. Ditch the Costco membership fee, but still shop there. I don't know anything about it. It says, totally possible. Find out how. you have to go to the, this link and figure out what that is. Start couponing and sock away your savings. Obviously, I agree with this one. Uh, I do the Ibotta thing. I do a lot of coupon stuff. You can print the printable coupons from my website, struggleville.net. There's a link at the top. Printable coupons has all the... Um, different brand coupons that you can get from coupons.com so i appreciate when you use the site because of course they give me a little kickback and that's why it's there and so yeah you can definitely save using coupons here's the th okay real quick the thing about couponing is you can't be one of those people 
who buys things who would they they would not otherwise buy the item if they didn't have a coupon. Because I mean that's why the manufacturers put them out, but that's not saving you money. So like you can see in here, what do we see? What do we see? Captain Crunch. If you weren't otherwise going to buy Captain Crunch, but you have a dollar off coupon, so you do buy Captain Crunch. Well, then the manufacturer just won, and you lost that battle because you're buying a product you didn't need and didn't want just because you had a coupon. And you also want to try and use your coupons when items are also on sale. If you can get an overlap of, you know, this item's a dollar off plus I have a dollar fifty off. Well, now all of a sudden you're saving two dollars and fifty cents on the item. So. Just a quickie there. Number 16, make money trying new products or taking surveys online. Um, all the websites I mentioned above, InstaGC, Prize Rebel, Swag Bucks, they all have surveys on them. There's literally dozens of sites where you can get paid for taking surveys. Um, I've never used any of these, I don't think, unless they've changed their name and I used to use them 10 years ago or something. But... Surveys are a legitimate way to make money online. You're going to get disqualified for a large portion of them, and it gets really annoying because you may spend 20 minutes doing it, and then they say you're disqualified. But you definitely can earn money. And one thing I learned back when I used to do them, I don't do them at all now just because I got so tired of answering the same questions over and over and over, and it was just awful. But as you get used to doing these surveys you start learning what the correct answer is in order to qualify for the survey. And the correct answer is not always the honest answer, and you have to decide which route to take. I qualified for a lot of surveys back in the day. Resell clothes, handbags, and shoes on ThreadUp. If you want to save serious cash, like 80% on slightly used designer brands... Thread Up is a great place to look. It's funny because the title makes me think that they're selling the clothes, but that first line makes me think that they're buying the clothes. But I guess it works both ways. So, basically, sell old clothes and shoes that you have on this website or app, whatever it is, Thread Up. Don't know much about the specific app, but, of course, legitimate way to... Um, save money, make money, whatever, on clothes. Obviously, they're not talking about generic brands. If you go and buy a t-shirt at Walmart, you're not going to resell it on one of these websites for big money because the value is just not there. But, um, you know, it's hard to say what you would make on this because it depends on scale and what kind of products you have. Um, a lot of things with clothes, the size matters, the pattern matters, the brand matters, uh, just the color matters. There's so many variables that it's, um, sure, you can make a lot of money. There's eBay sellers who make a living just getting clothes out of dumpsters, literally going to the Goodwill Outlet and going to dumpsters and um, reselling it online. So, of course you can. Earn Money is a mystery shopper. I've heard about these things for like 20 years, and I don't know a whole lot about it other than that. I don't know, you go into a store and pretend to be a customer, or I don't know if you're spying on employees or uh, other shoppers, or maybe you're looking for specific... I don't know what the hell you do, but mystery shopper, okay. Number 19, make up to $1,000 a month as a dog sitter with dog vacay. I love this idea. I just like dogs, so it sounds like a great idea to me. So you're like a daycare or... Um, a vacation day, like either, okay, a single day or like over a long period of time, like someone going on vacation. Love the idea. Maybe it's a great alternative to using a kennel or trying to burden family with taking care of your pets, dogs, I guess, specifically. Really like the idea. I could see it working with someone who's like a stay at home mom and the kids are gone during the day. Maybe while you drop them off at school, you go pick up this person's dog and watch it during the day. I don't know. Depending on how much you make, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. They also have um, different things where they'll pay people just for you to walk other people's dogs, and I'm sure there's specific services for that. And you know, if you Google "get paid for dog walking," I'm sure you could find it. But there's that that's available too. So cool, get exercise, walk someone's dog, and get paid. Sounds like a win-win to me. Sell CDs, DVDs, and video games you don't want to declutter. So it's a trade-in service, eBay has a trade-in service, Amazon has a trade-in service, and I'm sure there's other small websites that do the same thing. 
you're going to get pennies on the dollar. I mean, yeah, they're going to pay you, but they're not going to pay you much. You're not going to get much because what do you think they're doing with it? They're not collecting it. They're going to turn around and sell it on eBay or Amazon. So they're going to have to pay eBay and Amazon fees. They're going to have to count that some items are just never going to sell or they're just going to have some loss, you know. Um, and they got to make a profit with after paying these fees and assuming that there's going to be some loss and everything. They're just they're, they're not paying you much. So if you have the means to just, and the ability to list the item yourself on eBay, to list the item yourself on Amazon, you are much better off and will make more money doing it that way. If you just want to pile up all your stuff into a box and get rid of it, then this may be the option for you. I would try having a garage sale first, because even a garage sale, you're going to make more. If you sell DVDs for a buck a piece and sell video games for 2 or $3 a piece, it's going to be more than what you make off this declutter, so... Well, here it says ranging from forty five cents to a dollar eighty eight. I mean, I don't know. You're not gonna get a lot. Buy and sell used books with Book Scouter. So here's one that it runs into a space that I know something about because I've sold used, well, new and used, I guess, but used books on Amazon for years now, and I've used a lot of different scanning apps that tell you the prices of books. So I was interested in this and I tried this app out. Look, it works. Um, it gives you prices. It tells you how popular the item is on Amazon by giving you the Amazon rank. Um, I don't know how much I like it because here's the thing. is It gives you like 25 or 30 different companies. So here it says 35 buyback vendors. And it, it ranks them from highest to lowest on how much they will pay you for a book. But let's say you have... 20 or 30 books that you already own that you want to send in. If you get 30 different companies that are willing to pay you the most, are you going to make 30 different packages, 30 different boxes, and send them 30 different places? Like, that's just not going to make sense. Um, if you have, like, one used textbook that you still think is worth a lot of money, one, you're still going to make more if you sell it to Amazon or eBay. But if you want to sell it on, sorry, Amazon or eBay... But if you want to just send in one book, yeah, it's beneficial to send it to one place. But then you do you really need the app for that, like just to scan one book one time? I don't know. I mean, it's good in theory, but you don't want to send things all over the place. If you got used to this and scanned a ton of books, you would see a pattern of what's the best website overall. And after a while, I would just send them to whatever one you deem has given the best prices overall and just forget scanning it all the time. But... It's an option. Airbnb, rent out a spare room in your house. I'm sorry, I can't get behind that. I don't want strangers in my house. I don't want them in my house for two minutes, let alone staying overnight. I, I'm really amazed this is popular because I, I don't want people in my house. In addition, I don't want to be sleeping in a stranger's house either. Sell your original photos on... I'm going for it. Is it FOAP? It looks like soap with an F. FOAP? FOAP? I don't know. So basically, you install this app on your phone, you upload pictures you've taken, or you take pictures specifically for this, and companies will pay $10 to use your images, like a stock image in their advertisements or whatever materials they're using it for. Then you split that, FOPE gets $5, and you get $5. I think it's a pretty cool idea. I uh, installed the app to check it out. I don't, you're not gonna make a mu you're not gonna make much. A lot of people probably will never get a single sale, and other people maybe figure out a way to game the system to make a lot. And I say that because, excuse me, um, I noticed when researching this a little bit, people complaining of copyrighted images being on there, and um, like images of uh, Hollywood characters. Like I saw the Joker from Batman, pictures of that from like screenshots of the movie on there. And so those people, that's not legitimate. I mean, they're taking copyrighted material and then reselling it. So from a buyer's perspective, I would never buy from this site because obviously they're not uh, controlling their content to where someone's going to get sued eventually. If it gets popular enough and it's selling copyrighted material, people are going to get sued. So as a seller, as long as you know you own the images and you took the image and all that, great way to make money, but I wouldn't buy anything on it. So the next one we have is run errands for other people as a task rabbit tasker. 
You know, says help people move, clean, or do odd jobs. Uh, it seems all right. I'm sure it's just an app where people post things that they need done, and someone can come in and do those. If it's something that would be recurring, like with the same person doing the same job, like walking their dog, like we talked about earlier, I would ditch going through the app very quickly and just go straight to the person because I'm assuming, and I could be completely wrong here because I haven't used the app, TaskRabbit is probably taking a portion of what you earn. It's either that or it's ad-based, and ad-based just wouldn't make much money. So, <clears throat> Flip new, unused clothes and shoes by selling on in Selly. And here I hate their idea. I don't know if you can only sell. I don't know this app, so I don't know if you can, or website. Uh, if you can only sell new items and you can't sell used, and that's why they put unused. But here they say, so here's what you do. Check out department store end of season clearance. Think Dillard's, Nord's, or Macy's, or brands you know are hot, which I didn't know what Banana Republic is a hot brand, and I've never even heard of this damn thing, but who knows. I wear a flannel shirt and sweatpants most days. Um, <clears throat> so, the reason I hate this is because if you don't know what the hell you're doing and you just go into one of these stores and buy all their clearance, you are going to lose money. I guarantee you, you're going to lose money. There's certain styles that sell better, certain sizes, certain colors, different brands. There's a lot of factors. And sometimes clearance stuff's going to be damaged if you're not paying attention to that. So if you know what you're doing, it's a legitimate way to make money. But if you're just going to run in there and buy up a whole clearance section of random stuff, you're going to lose money. It's just not going to happen for you. So be careful. Don't go wasting a bunch of money on this. I just, meh. I don't like that too much. Earn money doing laundry through laundry care. Seems like a pretty neat idea. Uh, apparently you just do other people's laundry. It's like being a laundromat. And uh, just keep in mind, make sure you know your cost. You're going to have wear and tear on your washer and dryer. You need to factor that in. Uh, the water, electricity, your time, all of that. Also, again, I would want to know liabilities if you end up ruining someone's shirt, shrinking something. If they give you, you know, we just talked about some of these expensive department stores or whatever, if they paid... You know, I don't know, $100 for a shirt and you shrink it, what's your liability there? I would want to know that stuff before getting into it, but could be a way to make money. Be a tutor to K-12 through students with tutor.com. Um, I think outside of maybe students or someone who has just graduated college, some young person, I think most people in a position to be a tutor already have the means or know of ways to do it. My sister's a teacher, and she did tutoring through some company um, years ago. So, you know, teachers, librarians, people who would likely be tutors maybe already have an option and don't have a need for this. So, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously there's people in other fields that could be a tutor, but there, there's other options out there too. So maybe this is great, maybe it's not. I don't know, but... Certainly, tutoring has been something that's been around forever, and it's not a secret to anybody that you can make money doing that. 28. Well, it's taking a long-ass time. Make money browsing the internet, watching videos, or playing games with online online with swag bucks or inbox dollars. So, um, I, I just I mentioned swag bucks, Insta GC, and Prizerable. Those are the three that I recommend that I use, and um, I think you'd be better off using. Inbox dollars, I have been on their site and checked it out. I've never been really impressed with it, but I don't have anything against it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not one I prefer. I did see here at the bottom, it says $100 per month when you use these swag bucks hacks. I might have to do a separate video on what their swag bucks hacks are because, uh, like I said, it's a website I know a lot about, so I can kind of see if I think any of it's legitimate or not. Make $5 per quick and easy gig on Fiverr. So Fiverr's website, you get paid $5 originally. That's not how it works anymore, but you get paid $5 for doing a simple task. I think it's a 50-50 revenue split, but it might not be. Anyways, you're splitting some of that $5 with Fiverr, whatever the percentage is. So it's a marketplace for people who have a skill that they're selling and for people who are looking for someone with a skill. But 
Most of it's not $5 anymore. Um, you can charge any amount you want now. It might be increments of 5 I don't, I don't remember now because I don't really use it. But um, there's people all over the world, all sorts of different talents on there. And so it makes it um, a little oversaturated in a lot of categories because there are a lot of people. But if you have a specialty skill, you can certainly make money on it. And it's legitimate. So if you think you know how to do something and it has to be you know, online stuff, uh, writing articles for a website, photography, creating company logos or some kind of digital graphics, all that kind of stuff, um, you can make money on it. Get paid to give attorneys feedback about cases through online verdict. I have no idea, but I am never in favor of helping an attorney do anything, so next. Become an evening or weekend Lyft or Uber driver. I'm not going to say much about this because everyone's heard of Uber. You've probably heard of Lyft, which is essentially just the same thing, just their competitor or one of their competitors. I don't know how many are out there. You know, you're you're your own taxi and you drive around and people really like it and whatever. Oh, you know what? I should say something. If I remember, which hopefully I do, if you are interested in Uber, I found a promo code, which I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'll put a link in the description below, to get $50 when you like complete your first, draw, uh, first ride or first taking someone somewhere on Uber. So if you do sign up for it, I think I can get you an extra $50. And no, it's not a referral or anything. I don't get anything out of it. I just saw the code and posted it. So, uh, Shop for or deliver groceries with Instacart. Um, this is becoming really popular with a lot of places like Walmart does this now. I don't know about in all locations, but at least around here. Walmart, uh, another grocery store, hy V, where you tell them what you want to buy. They buy it all, bag it up. You drive up, they throw it in your car and pay. And you know. So I'm not sure how popular a service like Instacart will be when a lot of the stores are doing it themselves. I think hy V even will deliver your groceries within a certain radius or for a certain price. So... Um, don't invest too much into it because this might be this might be a dying uh, a, a, a dinosaur. So, <laughs> um, get paid to shop with Shopkick. Uh, get points for walking into certain stores, scanning products with your smartphone. Hmm, I don't know anything about it. I know I've heard of it after I read that, but. So they're going to give you different stores that you need to go into. It's probably using the geolocation on your phone to see where you're at. And they want you to scan the products. Um, they're either maybe looking at pricing. They want to see what the price is at different stores. Or maybe they even want to look at the stock that's available in certain stores. I wouldn't expect you'd make much off of that. And for your time, if you have to drive to different stores, again, consider the extra wear and tear in your car if you weren't already going to go to that store and how much gas you're using. If if you have to make a 10-minute drive, that's five miles to get, you know, 50 cents for scanning some item. I No thank you. So just look at the metrics of that and make sure it's worth your time. Share your shopping selfies through... Stylinity? Stylinity? Stylinity. I don't know. I, this, this is not my domain. I don't know anything about it. Get paid per click on your Twitter or YouTube accounts with my likes. So this is especially great for bloggers. Sign up with my likes and share sponsored tweets or place the my likes widget on your account to get paid per click. This is actually something that when I looked through the list the first time I wanted to look into and I forgot about it because now I don't know. Um, so they're targeting influence, social media influencers. Specifically it says Twitter or YouTube. I would imagine Instagram is also in, uh, incorporated with this. And basically websites are going to give you an ad or maybe some kind of line that you have to put in a tweet or a YouTube video or a description or talk about something specific. They're trying to get popular people on different platforms to drive traffic to whatever it is. I'm surprised it's get paid per click. It's really hard to find things that will pay you per click. Usually they pay you per sale. So you get a percentage of a sale amount or you get um, what's called a lead. So if someone gives their email address, you get a dollar or whatever it is. 
So to pay per click, I would imagine it's only a penny, two pennies, uh, you know, just a couple of pennies per click. Um, but it's definitely something I would be interested in and something I'm personally going to check out. So it might be something, if you have any sort of following on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, any of the social media sites to um, check out. But you're talking about like hundreds and thousands of clicks, not just like five or ten. It's got to be a lot. So keep it in mind. <clears throat> Use Paribus. To get automatic price adjustments on your purchases. Um, watch for price is a great way to make money, blah, blah. But who has time for that? Especially in another store, blah. Paris tracks all your online purchases and negotiates with the retailer to get you a refund for the difference. So that reminds me of that, what was it, number two whip at the top and the debt consolidation people. And I don't like when they're saying they negotiate with the retailer. Like, what are they doing? Like, and how much are they going to save you if they find... You know, a the can of beans is a dollar cheaper at a different store. So what, they're going to get you that dollar off, but they're going to take something of that. I just, I don't know. I would just use the Walmart Savings Catcher app. At least that will give you some money back. Um, if you shop at Walmart, you scan your receipt. They'll check competitors in the area. If they match the exact same item for a cheaper amount at a competitor, they'll give you the difference on, like, a Walmart gift card. So that seems like a better option. I don't know about all this negotiate with the retailer crap i don't know 37 get cash back with these store credit cards um must have amazing self-control yeah i wouldn't the list is supposed to be like saving money to get out of debt and the whole cash back thing it's gonna be one to three percent probably this is ten percent i don't maybe maybe i don't go to pottery barn but um like the amazon card is three percent um menards is one or two percent I mean, you got to spend so much money for that to add up. I just, that's not a good way to save money. So our next one is shop with discounted gift cards from Raise.com to easily save 12 to 15%. So you basically buy gift cards at a discounted price depending, you know, they're going to fluctuate. They're going to go on sale essentially, but you're going to get a certain percentage off. Let's say you buy a $25 gift card, you're only going to pay $21 for it or whatever it is. If they deliver instantly, it's a good idea if you know you're going to be making a purchase. Like if they have eBay cards, and like the example I used, a $25 gift card for $21, and you know you're going to be buying a $25 or more item on eBay, and they pay you instantly, the website does, then yeah, go over there, buy it, get it $4 cheaper, and then go to eBay. It's a good little idea. I've never used raise.com. What I use is mygiftcardsplus.com. And I like that because it links to a Swagbucks account. So if you're a Swagbucks user, if you've ever considered using it, um, it, it combines it. So you can still cash out to PayPal. Uh, you can get a virtual Visa card if you're looking for cash options. Otherwise, you can get gift cards at different places. But you're not relying on just your gift card savings to get money back you can also earn you know in watching videos and doing surveys and those other ways so i think um, it helps build up a little nest egg of stuff so next we have get paid to work work out with achieve mint talk about killing two birds with one stone check out these six ways to get paid staying active includes up to 50 dollars from achievement i don't know anything about this one um I don't know if they still have it, but Walgreens used to have something with their app where you would get points for doing different activities or recording your workouts or physical activity. I don't know. Um, they're not going to pay you a lot for working out, so I don't know what the hell you're going to get out of it. <clears throat> Let Retail Me Not find the best price, prices for you. Quick way to save on cash purchase at time. Uh, send an email. I don't know. We're skipping it. 41. Get paid to use Swagbucks for your search engine. <clears throat> so this is the second time they're using Swagbucks, and really the third or fourth time they're mentioning something related to it as ways to make money. Um, here's the thing: the Swagbucks search you can. You're only going to use a few. You're only going to get a few pennies. So typically you're talking about six or seven pennies for a search. It's not every search. It's just by chance if you happen to quote win. Um, the most you can get is a dollar. But that's like, you know, a unicorn. So, um, you can get up to four search, unless Swagbucks has changed their policy from what 
it was. You can get up to four search wins a day, so you're only talking maybe 20 cents a day. It's really not going to add up to much. InstaGC does the same thing with their search engine, and Bing, if you have a Microsoft account, has their own point system, and it works a little bit differently. I think you get paid for every search up to 20 searches a day. been a long time since I looked into it, but they have something also. Forty-two work as a pro, pro. I was gonna say professional proofreader, but I added a word that does not exist. Work as a proofreader in your spare time. If you have eagle eyes when it comes to catching speller and grammar and formatting errors, this may be for you. Uh, look at this. Average of thirty-five cents a word or seventeen dollars an hour. Huh. That's interesting. I'm awful at grammar. If anyone has ever read anything I've written I suck at grammar I'm so bad at it but here's my thing about the English language is or really any language the only thing you're trying to do is transfer an idea from one person to the other if you effectively do that your spelling doesn't matter your grammar doesn't matter you're just being a language snob when you go after people for misspelling and grammar errors. As long as you understand the idea that is trying to be transferred from one brain to another, it was effective communication, and I do not care which there I am supposed to be using. <laughs> Anyways, you can definitely make money as a proofreader. Um, it wouldn't be anything I would do, and I, I wouldn't know much about it because I would be awful at it, but I'm sure you can make money doing that. Uh, get paid to install Shop Tracker or Savvy Connect on your phone. Oh, let's see. These apps gather data like the times of day people browse or how long they visit certain sites. I don't like anything that's tracking me. I'm not going to put anything on my phone or any device I own that actively tracks me. I'm not going to get an Alexa or that Google Home thing, whatever they call theirs, that's like the voice command deal. <clears throat> I was watching a thing. Just a side note, this guy had his Alexa next to his TV and he watched some movie and whatever the content was on the video or on the movie, he started getting those ads on his uh, computer. And I've seen a bunch of, uh, of examples of people getting similar things. It says it's only recording when you say Alexa and then whatever. No, bullshit. It's recording everything and I don't like it. So, tangent over. Make crafts and sell them on Etsy. It's a great way to make money. It's been around forever. Um, you see at the bottom here it says 20 cents per listing. They last for four months. You pay a 3.5% transaction fee on the sale. And, um, yeah, if you know how to make anything, you can sell it on Etsy. There's plenty of people that make a full-time living selling on Etsy. Something I'd like to keep in mind on that is the heavier the item, a lot of craft things, if you're like a woodworker and you're building wood things, you're probably not going to sell it on Etsy because it's going to cost so much to ship. So you want to concentrate on light things, small things, preferably non-fragile things because fragile means bigger box, more packaging materials, which is going to be heavier, which is going to cost you more to ship to people, plus you're adding the element of possible breakage, which is a total loss for you. So um, small items that are creative and unique, but you know you can't do stuff that takes you an entire day to make, or you're going to have to charge a ton for it. Um, well, yeah, that's a good idea. Take on freelance projects through Upwork. Um, it's a freelance website. It's just like Fiverr. It's, it's going to be a, very similar. Start a blog on HostGator and then monetize it. Uh, this would have to be its own entire video. You could talk, talk a lot about starting a blog or some kind of website and then making money off of it. The thing is, you're not going to make much in most cases, and you have to get lots and lots of traffic. Any ad network, that, which also you'd have to separately be approved of, besides just having your host get your website, you have to get individually approved by different ad networks. But they pay you, like, pennies in general. We'll, we'll just to keep it simple. Pennies per thousand views. So... You get a thousand people to your website and maybe you make 50 cents or something or, you know, whatever. It, it varies greatly. But still, they're, just the fact that the metric is per thousand views should tell you how many views you're going to need to have to be making money at that. So if it's something you want to do and it's something you'd be interested in, 
go right ahead, know that it's more likely a long-term solution that will be a slow process of making money rather than, hey, I started a website and now this is my full-time job. Like, it's not going to happen instantly. It's going to, it's going to take time and, um, you're going to really have to be diligent about driving traffic to the site. It's not going to happen by accident. And people say all the time, just provide great content and people go, no, no, it doesn't work that way. Just because you have great content, you could have great content and no one's ever going to find it because there's billions of web pages out there. So it's not just great content. Great content is once people find you, they'll keep coming back because you have great content, but you need another way to initially get people to read that content and realize it is great content. <clears throat> Write an ebook and self publish using Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. So I have an ebook I wrote, I don't know, three or four years ago now. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, you can make money doing that. If you like to write, uh, it takes a lot of time and you got to do it again. It's something where you have to promote yourself. It's not going to just sell itself in most cases. One thing that I think is actually easier that you'd have to look at the specific rules because I did this again years ago. But you can republish public domain books. So a book that no longer has a copyright owner, it's free for every, anyone to use. This is, oh man, I shouldn't even go into the details because I know I'm going to get them wrong. It's going to be books written like before 1920 or something like that. So it's older books, some classic books. Um, there's websites where you can download the entire public domain book and then to upload it to Amazon, you have to alter it slightly. So, for me, the easiest way was to illustrate the books. I published a few books on Lincoln, and you have to have at least 10 pictures, at least at the time I did this. It could be different now. You have to have at least 10 different pictures. So I have three public domain Lincoln books that I uploaded to Amazon, and I used the same 10 pictures and just spread them out throughout the book. Bam, good enough. It is now a different item that is listed on Amazon. I think I charge 99 cents a piece for them, and I get like 30 cents every time it sells. It's not like a lot, but... Um, you know, if you had a hundred of those and you can sell three a day, uh, that's a bad example. Anyways, it would be something where you'd want a large quantity and then you're going to, this, the earnings are going to be diversified over a ton of different titles if you're going the public domain uh, book way. So, uh, you also, you don't have to illustrate it. You could annotate it or you can put it in a different language, which sounds very difficult. Um, I guess you could try some website that automates it and, use like Google Translator to just translate a whole page at a time or something, but I don't know how accurate it would be. Uh, become a voiceover artist with Voice Bunny. If you got one of those voices people want to hear, I guess so. You know, voiceover people make a ton of money, so I don't know if I would even go through this website, but I don't know how you get into the job of being a voiceover person, but I heard uh, <laughs> guys on the radio talking about it and saying how much incredible amount of money their voiceover guy made so um if you're capable maybe you already know about how to make money better than voice bunny but i was kind of amazed how much money those people make no one wants to hear my voice so it's not something for me flip furniture for a profit on craigslist if you know how to refurbish it or if you find a great deal craigslist is it sounds like this is old people making this article because I don't think people really use Craigslist anymore. I think you'd be more likely to find it on Facebook or maybe there's some some other app or something that has uh, furniture and used furniture and you know secondhand stuff. Anyways, um, most likely you're probably going to refurbish it in some way and then resell it unless you just find a great deal at a thrift store or someone's throwing something out or you find it at a garage sale. Yeah, if you can repurpose something or refinish it, of course you can make money. Furniture is a little difficult just because the size of room it'll take up in your house if you have to store it or if it's in a garage and the weight of it, you know, if it's something that's really heavy, you're dealing with that, but you can obviously make money. So that's the 49, I don't even know what the, 49, no, it says 50. Where's 50? Where's 50? Where's, okay, so if you look at the URL, it says 50 brilliant ways to pay off your debt. And then the actual article is 49, so maybe they eliminated one, or they just couldn't come up with the 50th way. <laughs> so the URL is down below in the description if you want to find the 50, which magically became 49 brilliant ways to pay off your debt. 
Hopefully this gave you guys some options for 2017. I'm not sure. Or 2018. 2018. That's the year coming up. Um, hopefully you guys like this video. I know it was long. I didn't think it would take this long to do. But, hey, we got it done. And uh, hopefully it was beneficial. I know there's some sites that I'm going to check out and see if I can make some money on. And, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.